Now then the apostle writes to these believers in Rome, and we read these things now to equip us, to enable us to stand in this day. It enabled them to stand in that day. They're in the city of Rome. Of course, they were surrounded uh, in that public environment. They were surrounded with a pantheon of gods, uh -huh. uh, with all kinds of uh, expectations of tolerance one for another. The Romans brought in gods from all over the world, yeah. honored all of them, were willing to allow uh, those kinds of things, and uh, we're living in the same kind of environment, aren't we? <laughs> Where you are pressured to be accepting and not to offend anyone, anyone at all, in whatever they choose to think. One person's opinion of the truth is just, a matter, is just as good as another person's opinion of the truth. Uh, the truth is they don't believe in any truth except what they want to make up. And that's what the apostle's writing about. So he's giving the believers an explanation of what they're seeing around them. And the truth is they've rejected the truth. Those who have rejected God have rejected his truth. And when you see that, that enables you to stand. It enables you to stand as part of the armor of God that we're granted in Christ Jesus. Put on God's whole armor. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. These, the, this kind of reasoning and thinking and view of God and the rationalizations that go along with it is part of his wiles to weave his way in and to undermine your understanding, your perception of what God has revealed. To make the earth the primary thing, to make people and their interests and their concerns first in your mind and to break down the foundations. And of course we know the foundations are fallen, then what shall we do? So the apostle brings them right back and tells these believers, this is what they've done. This is why they think this way. This is why they're darkened in their understanding. You remember the word, his words back here in Ephesians 4? Uh, you're darkened in, they're, they're darkened in their understanding. Past feeling. Having their understanding darkened being, darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, yeah. to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. Yeah. Now, of course, we, we, we all know that the apostle can speak in a different way to these believers in Ephesus. They've made some more progress. The believers in Rome, he's equipping them now to make progress, to be able to put these things together, to arm themselves, to make themselves, to, to alert them about these things. Brother Matt talked to us about being alert, sober, ready, have our hope set fully on the things to be revealed. That's, that's what the apostle's doing. Peter spoke about that that Brother Matt referred to earlier. And Paul's speaking to these Romans, to the believers in Rome about this, to, to enable them to be that very thing. Amen. And, of course, we read these words in the same way, with the same perspective of what's happening around us. We, we talked about it this morning, especially. Our current culture, how, how uh, uh, those that the Apostle Paul describes here are trumpeted. They're exalted as brave and honest and open and wonderful people in our culture and society. And if you dare say a thing about them, my goodness, the politicians do not dare say a thing. There's one particular politician right now that's being castigated, a believer, is being castigated. I see little snips and so forth, little headline things uh, on a regular basis about this particular politician because of their alignment with believers, with Bible believers of all things, people who take the Bible literally. Statements are made like that about this particular person. And, uh, of course, if they continue to, uh, if, if this particular politician continues to make themselves, uh, uh, to keep themselves in the spotlight and so forth, they're going to go after them even more from that perspective, see, and castigate them and damage, do as much damage as they possibly can because of their thinking. 
You see, our culture and those who lead this kind of thinking of acceptance of everyone, they're, they're not willing. They, they themselves are the truth, aren't they? They're the arbiters. They're the judges of the truth. When we know good and well, they don't believe any truth. They just believe themselves and those who agree with them and those who put a seal of approval on their own appetites. What the apostle's revealing here, what the Spirit's revealing here through Paul's words will, make, will, will anchor us by assuring us that these people who think this way are in darkness. They have rejected the light. They've turned away from God, and he's turned away from them and given them up. No matter what some may say that God, as Brother Jeremy so ably said, that God loves you no matter what. There are numerous uh, preachers and teachers in public who are, who, who are giving that impression. At the least, they're giving that impression. They would never uh, admit to saying things like that or, or communicating that truth, but they're certainly giving that impression. Although some would say, some would say that very thing. Oh, yes, God just loves everybody. And everybody, and it's all going to work out in the end for everyone. That's what some would say. Well, it's a deception of the worst order. Being firmly grounded in this truth, of course, this, this, is, an, this, is, a, this is a ration or a, a reasoning from the foundation truth that God is, as, as our, our brother stated for us, that He is our maker. And that His purpose in making us is the focus of faith. Faith is rooted and grounded in that reality of who he is and why he has made us. And then the good fruit that comes from that, the pure, the pure lives, the right thinking, the godly behavior, the appetites for godliness, the learning of righteousness and truth, those things are natural, see. They're the natural result what God has worked in his people. And as Brother Michael reminded us this morning, the alternative to that is a perversion of everything, which just goes down and down and down and down into darkness and greater, greater, ever more greater darkness. And there is no life there. What they have here is the only thing they have, and they're going to lose that. And they know it but they just try to entertain themselves into ignoring that reality. Buying things, doing things, traveling here, achieving things, accomplishing things for themselves, just so that they can drown it out, drown out the reality that the end is coming. The end is coming. And they don't want to talk about what then. We know what then is. It's the judgment. It's the judgment of Almighty God. Thank you, brother, for uh, this strong affirmation of these things, reminding us of these things, and, and uh, further equipping us and, uh, to, to stand firm in the evil day, not to be deceived by these things that are all around us. We have to deal with, have to reason about every day. We need to be firmly grounded so we can reason, think rightly about these things. You have some comments there, brother?